Yo, 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 what's up, my OG fam? One love, etc. My original gamers out there. And how are you guys all doing today? It is your, your host, OGC, rocking uh, brewing stuff, uh, no big deal, signed Charlie McAvoy jersey. No biggie, no biggie. Uh, anyways, today we're, we're going to talk about a couple tips for PvP. Uh, this has been requested a bunch. We're also going to talk about the next Lenari giveaway and or Get Your Jacks. Um, so our Get Your Jacks giveaway, I will get to that. But first, let's talk PvP basics. First, uh, disclaimer, this is not a best of or anything like that. This is general concepts only. Take from it what you want, leave the rest. This is very basic general information, but information you should probably be aware of. So the first most important thing is always deploy a turtle plus talk. Turtle plus talk is fundamental even when the new patches come and PvP gets an overhaul. That's still going to be in every person's setup. Uh, so turtle plus talk. If it's for a clash of feet or something like that, bring your own turtle. If it's in uh, your regular world or um, for the flower event or whatever, uh, borrow a turtle. Make an alt, borrow a turtle. Uh, it doesn't take super long for your ult to get to turtle level. Dragon. Always use your dragon for PvP. Your dragon will give you a ton of stats and hopefully you have a decent dragon. Uh, after I show you this basic setup, I'll show off my two main dragons and why I have each one. The second thing is basic formations. So imagine this is the battlefield. There's going to be three different lanes. Because everybody has to run a turtle plus talk in order to be competitive against other people, the turtles are really awkwardly placed. So if you place the turtle all the way on one side, it breaks up the next two areas into two separate areas. If you place the turtle all the way on the other side, then it breaks up the other two. And if you place the turtle in the middle, uh, it pretty much just creates uh, thirds. It cuts the, the battlefield down into thirds. So when I talk about a power side and or a stall side, it's going to be one out of three. I don't know what OGs do. All I know is what original gamers do. So this is standard formation. You have three. Um, the blue represents um, your stall. So this is where your Avalon is not placed. Uh, the red represents where your Avalon is placed. So in order to understand what makes up a power side is uh, everything that surrounds Avalon. His Warhorn is massive, it affects troops, and it, it uh, affects heroes, it affects your dragon, it affects everything around him. So because of that, that is where your power side is going to be. It's going to be all around uh, at Avalon. So um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much what the red represents. The blue is just that other filler space. Uh, in the blue, you can put things like Rose. Um, if you are not running Fenris in, in your power side, you can put Fenris there. Um, Bane, whatever is going to slow down the enemies. If you're, say you're a human, you can put your Swordsman there, that way you can resurrect them. If you're a uh, Slyph, you can put an extra pack of Huntresses there. Uh, you get the idea. So, these are two different setups. This bottom one, the power side could be on either side, it doesn't really matter. For the sake of this example, I'm putting it here. One of these is better than the other. Do you want to take a wild guess? Let me know in the comment section. Um, this top one's horrible. If you put your power side in the middle, there's, there's a problem. When, when you face off against somebody that puts it to this one side or the other, which is more often the, the case. If your power side is um, in the middle, what will happen is you'll go in and you will crush and erase that side. So this whole thing will be X'd out. You win. You win the middle. Your opponent is going to take out one of your sides. Now the problem with this, for the person placing their, their, their power, power side in the middle, is from here on out, these two are equal. So they're, they're, they're just going to be at a standstill. If your power side is in the middle, this person is now going to attack both of the two remaining left. So their firepower could be split up. If Mako is on one side and Jax is on the other, they're going to split up their firepower. Meanwhile, this whole side is just going to attack. This bunch of running probably doesn't make much sense, but 
if you're power size in the middle, you're going to pretty much put yourself in a pincer where the enemy can surround you and get you from both sides. If you stack your power side on one specific side and make the other side stall out, you have a much better chance of winning and then coming in in performing a pincer movement. If you don't know what a pincer movement is, uh, Google it. It's kind of cool to check out the terminology. Um, so that's the basic rundown for that. What makes up your power side is... I wonder if I can do it real quick. I bet you I can. All right, so check this out. We got A for Avalon. Everything that's around Avalon in all directions is going to make up your power size. So anything that gets attack speed boost. So I would highly recommend putting Mako, maybe your Jax. Um, things that benefit from increased auto attack things. So maybe a Avril. Um, anything that, that can benefit from that. If you're uh, a Sliff and you run no humans, then maybe put your Cleo nearby. Whoops. Cleo has an O, it's in the name. So anything that benefits from, from auto attacks. The second thing to consider is having something that increases the damage done for all of your main DPS heroes. Jax, Mako, uh, Spring, etc. All of your rogues. Fenris you can put here or on the cell side. Uh, none of this is set in stone, but it's general concepts. Um, go back to the disclaimer at the beginning. You can also include things like Denji. If you put Denji up front to run up, uh, he, he'll do the weakening armor, armor and that will increase the damage from Jackson Mako. So that they'll be able to tear through the other side more. Now there is one other thing that you can consider. I'm just going to erase everything. Oh wow, look at that close up. Oh my god, I am one good looking person. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should probably subscribe. Look at how amazing I look. Like, why am I doing gaming videos? Forget it, forget it. I'm going to go be a model. Might, might, might be uh, biting off a little bit too much on that one. So, the last thing to consider is... The last thing to consider is this. And let's just shade that down a little bit. The last thing is balance. So if you get in a game where it's all, this is the battlefield, it's all broken up, right? You got your three quadrants. Say that your, your power size here and the enemy power size here, both of your power size line up on the same, the same line. This is where the balance comes in. If you have a really, really tanky hero, say, um, uh, Virion. Virion is here with the max out bubble, the max out heal, Tyrion can heal him up, Vega can heal him up, etc. If this is the case for this specific example, Virion would do much better here on your power side because then he can stall out the enemy Jax, the enemy Mako. Same thing with Bane. Bane can be very, very beneficial on your power side because he can tie up the enemy everything everything that he's near with the provoke so that's very beneficial however this is where it gets weird if the enemy's power side is on the opposite side you want your virion and you want your bane over there so it's important to note that when you do things like uh, clash of fate or if you're going for the imperium uh, take a mental note on where your enemy's power side is that way you can set up with a, a counter. Uh, there's one last thing, I actually I take that back, there's two last things that I want to share when it comes to uh, matching power size. If you match power size, there's one last thing that you can do to really disrupt your, your opponent. Um, you can place a green dragon, a jade dragon with uh, aerial blast. That aerial blast will push back all of their heroes and it will the CC just messes with the hero, so it will totally disrupt their power side. 
So there is an option to put a Jade Dragon over there. Do not put it in the front line. You need something in front of that dragon. Um, you can do that. The second thing, I guess I'll go like that. Uh, the second thing is when you set up your PvP formations, have the inverse. So you, you have six presets, right? Take one of them in one of your presets, set it up so that your power side's over here. In another preset, set up so your power side is over here. That way, if the enemies are doing the same thing, keeping track so that they can mess with your power side, that way you can flip it on them. And that, that could totally throw them off. It's, it's, it's a very good thing to do. So let's uh, let's jump in game. Let's check out a couple things in game. Uh, also, my, my dragons, so you can un understand a little bit on dragons for PvP. Ian, let's talk uh, money and giveaways. So see you guys in game. Hey, what's up guys? So we are back. Um, the game is now located up there or up there. I can't tell if this thing gets inverse or not. Um, so I bet you, nope, there. That's where I'm betting. Um, I'm probably wrong. So Lenari giveaway. I'm going to do $10 gift cards. I don't know how many yet. Um, it depends on how much extra money I have in my paycheck. So I'm going to do at least a couple. So uh, if uh, if somehow I made more money than I normally do, then I'll I'll do that. Uh, probably not, but there'll be at least a, a couple. Uh, in order to get the Lenari, uh, leave a question in the comments. The question can be anything. Uh, it can be game related. You can ask me a personal question. I uh, I, I really don't care. Ask me what, whatever you want. I'll answer it. In that video will be up on Sunday. I'll probably share what happened in Clash um, because it's the last week of Clash, and I'll answer questions. So yeah, um, it will be a ten dollar gift card. You'll have to let me know if it's iTunes or Google Play. Uh, you also have to be subscribed. So this is a uh, this is one one of my setups that, that I use. Um, as you, as you can see, where my Avalon is placed, my Avalon is going to run fours when we're talking about power side. So th this is my power side. Uh, you can see the little icons over the units' heads um, or near them to see that they, they get a bonus. So I have the people getting affected by it is going to be. Cleo, Avril, uh, Mako, the Fire Mage, Denji, Gan, and Spring, and uh, of course Jax. Plus, I, I have uh, both units getting Warhorn as well. Uh, so the the units will also help. Although units in this game for the, where we're at right now, they're just there to tank. So, but who knows? Maybe maybe they'll, they'll do extra damage. So the the point of this side is uh, hopefully just to blast down the enemies as fast as possible. Since I don't have the Sage set, um, I usually start with Blizzard because Blizzard does a surprising amount of damage and my uh, Averill is set up pretty well. Um, on the other side, you can see in, in the middle, I, I have the Turtle and then kind of between the middle and that top region, I, I have my Rose. And on the extreme, I, I have Fenris along with Bane and Belrog. Uh, also in the middle, I have Virion to tank stuff up. So. I, I'm pretty evenly dispersed towards the middle and top of my formation and the bottom is just stacked up. I can do things to improve for this bottom um, or I can, you know, uh, do little things like move Tyrion around. This is just what I use in Miner's Vent. It's, it's not perfect, but it works. A um, couple of things I, I'd like to point out with it is place your Mako to, to an extreme. Um, you want Mako to hang back and not just get bursted down. At the same time, you don't want the enemy Fenris to, to get near your Mako, so it, it, it's kind of tough. Uh, ideally, you want Jackson Mako to be spread out a little bit, not in perfect line for a Firestorm. Um, and Dragon. So I feel fine putting my Dragon on the front line here. Um, I do not do this with all of my Dragons, but for that specific Dragon, I do. My other dragon, I would not put on the front line. I, I would put it behind at least one pack of um, of the of the huntresses. 
So I'll, I'll show you the reason why I, I feel fine with that dragon. So, and, and you got to remember, with my power size, like starting with Blizzard, uh, I don't always do that, but I, 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 I do frequently. Things like that, um, that does not mean that's the best of or the best thing to do. That's just what I find is working for me. I also don't have the Sage set, like the Sage Dragon set. If I had that, I'd be doing Spray and Pray for a time every time, uh, but I'm not that lucky. So the reason why I feel fine putting this dragon on the front line is uh, it, it has a bunch of reduced damage um, and it, it, it wants to be close to the enemy so that it can uh, reduce the enemy's uh, attack speed and movement speed and everything else. Um, it also has a decent amount of HP. It's got almost 3, 3 million HP. Add on Gan on top of that and uh, we're, we're talking a significant amount of uh, health with a good amount of damage reduction. Uh, I got my purple sass, and then when it comes to dragons, there, there's, I really think for right now, there's only two types of dragons that really matter. Uh, the Azul dragon is best by far because of Noble Blood. Noble Blood, um, making it so that your, your friendly units and, and everything take 15% reduced physical damage, that alone is huge. They also heal one, almost 1% 1 health per second. For the whole fight for all of your, your units what more can you ask for um so the blue dragon i do think that this is uh the the best by far add on uh if this was blessed war song hands down best dragon uh it's not as blessed humanoid i'll hold on to it just uh just because humanoids are always in the cycle so this one I feel fine putting on the front because it, it has so much damage reduction overall and it wants to be close to the enemies. Uh, so if I um, if I switch it up and I, we, we take a look at, um, there we go. If we look at my, my other dragon, granted even if this dragon was level 50, I still wouldn't want to put it in the front. Um, it has greater rebirth. So this is instead of noble blood. So this is the equivalence of noble blood for the green. And I'll tell you why I think green is the, the second best option for dragons. And, and honestly, if you're competitive, the only other option uh, for competitive play is because um, with the greater rebirth, you have a chance to resurrect your, your troops with a good portion of their health. That helps. That's, that's, not, the, that's not the game breaking portion of, of the green or why the green would be second best, but it's a fantastic skill. I happen to have it. Uh, a couple of purples. Aerial Blasts. That that is um that is the reason why I would go with the green if you cannot go with a blue dragon. Uh, the aerial blast will push back the enemies. Not only does it affect uh, the the troops, but it also affects the uh, heroes. So you can do like Cleo, you can do Gan, what whatever. Uh, specifically with Cleo, it's going to have massive crowd control for enemy units. Not all of them, but the vast majority of the enemy units will have a major crowd control. If you cannot reduce the enemy's damage permanently for the rest of the battle, or significantly for a short period of time, the next best, best option is crowd control. Uh, crowd control pretty much makes a, a, a unit or a hero, uh, it renders them useless for a period of time. So with, uh, with the Aerial Blast, it doesn't directly reduce the enemy's damage. However, it will do a pushback. If it hits the heroes, it will push back the heroes. Say it's a, a Jax or a Mako, and the Jax is not doing a Spray and Pray yet because it's the beginning of the battle. Um, it will stun them for, for a period of time, making uh, them useless and essentially reducing their damage overall. Add that on with the uh, Tranquility for a, an additional heal. Um, that helps out. And that, that's my green dragon. I do not put this one in the front just because it's not nearly as tanky as, uh, as the Azul dragon. Um, so when it comes to the PvP formations and, and everything that, that, we, that we just covered, uh, it's all situational. It depends on your situation. Look, look at where you are, what you have available to you, what your strategy is going to be and then make the best decisions you can. And if you notice that something's not working, switch it up. Um, you have time uh, between the minor events, which is every week, you're not going to take any losses. Hop into there, just PVP people. 
I don't do miners run to win. I, I just go into PvP. Um, there's nothing from it that I need. Uh, I have everything I need in, in game. Um, I keep my power as low as po possible, and I'm stuck at over three million power. I, I have everything that I need. I just go into PvP because I can't fight on the server I'm on. Now I'm going to cry. Uh, so try different things out. The other thing to do is watch other people and see what they're doing. See what they're doing wrong and see what they're doing right. If they're doing a, a mistake o over and over or if, if their power side is just collapsing instantly uh, for whatever reason, watch and find out what, what's going on. Um, if somebody beats you um, or beats somebody that you know is pretty good, watch those replays. Find, find out what's going on. Um, why, why, why they won? Uh, not and not just like stats and everything else, but how is their formation set up? Uh, I show you guys some PvP, but all the stuff I have from the past week, um, it, it was just uh, <laughs> I, I didn't really lose, and it was very one-sided. So um, yeah, so try out different things. Enjoy the game. Don't worry about what's the best of this or the best of that. I just want to give you guys some general concepts to, to think about uh, to hopefully help, help you out and, and get the mind stimulated. Uh, think for yourself and come up with new things. There's, there's trends out there that uh, are fantastic, um, but it, it takes away from the experience if, if we just find out the best thing. It's fun exploring the game and finding out. So uh, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification for notifications because it's a bell notification. Hit the thumbs up button. Uh, leave a question in the comments uh, if you want to hop into the Lenari giveaway for a $10 gift card for um, uh, either Google uh, Play or the Apple Store so you can buy Jacks because you're a poor college student uh, who's living off of ramen. Um, <laughs> And on Sunday, I'll, I'll announce the, the winner. At some point in time, I'll, I'll, I'll get everything sent out. Um, I'm kind of trying to make as many videos as I can right now because I'm going away. And uh, while I'm away, I still want the videos to be able to, to release while, while I'm gone. Um, so I'm, I'm doing the, the best I can with what I have right now. So uh, hang in there, my OG fam, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, somebody's going to say in the comments, don't ever say fam again. You know what? I agree.